The million dollar question for newly diagnosed diabetics, or really any diabetic, is this What would it take for me to become non diabetic? Is there anything I could do, or maybe start doing, or stop doing that would bring me from my presently miserable high glucose levels and neuropathy and blurred vision and failing kidneys into a place of nearly normal blood sugar and freedom from all these diabetic complications? Well, for most diabetics, if there were any course of action that they could be absolutely sure and certain that would deliver them from diabetes, they would jump at it. If there was a magic red button to push, they'd push it. If dyeing their hair orange would get the job done, they'd head for the drugstore and look for the orange hair dye. If walking a mile every morning would turn them into non diabetics, well, they'd do it. If only they could be sure. But of course, there are no guarantees, and on top of that, opinions vary widely on the subject of a diabetic becoming non diabetic. In fact, many medical professionals will tell you it just cannot be done. And they'll almost laugh at you if you tell them you want to try, especially if you want to try without meds. The best hope they can give you is to encourage you to faithfully take your meds, and when they no longer work, take insulin shots, and when that's no longer effective, well, get your things in order. You're not long for this world. Some will tell you that, yeah, you can overcome diabetes, but even here there are numerous opinions. Some will tell you to become a strict vegan. Others will tell you to start eating an all meat diet. Some will tell you to watch those ketones. Others will say ketones, schmetones, just eat low carb. Some will insist that if you eliminate all processed foods, diabetes will pack its bags and run away. How's a person to know what to do? And in the midst of all this well meaning but divergent advice, you're left to wonder just what am I to believe? One of the reasons I have these challenges to beat diabetes in four months or six months is to demonstrate to you by means of your glucose meter and getting A1C scores frequently that the program that I recommend to you really and truly works. Not just because you feel better or you have a better mood these days, not just because you're taking hope because I talk so positively, but because the cold, hard, black and white data coming from your glucose meter and your A1C tests is confirming beyond any dispute. Your glucose levels are improving, not just slightly or a little bit, but dramatically, significantly, and amazingly. Most people, not all, but most, can see significant improvement in four to six months, or about 120 to 180 days. But let's get back to that question, what would it take for you to become non-diabetic by your glucose levels and your A1C score? The answer to that question will differ from person to person depending on your age, how much fat is in your liver and pancreas, and how long you've been diabetic or had severe insulin resistance. For some people, a simple loss of just 30 pounds or about 14 kilograms would do the job. If you could just lose that much weight and keep it off, your A1C would gradually follow and you'd find yourself below the diabetic marker of an A1C of 6.5. But for others, it would take more than that or a different approach. Some could become non-diabetic simply by eating two meals within a six or eight hour window every day and eliminating all snacks. For some people, cutting their carbohydrates down to 100 grams per day would bring them to the promised land of freedom from diabetes. But others, well, they'd need to cut their carbs lower, maybe to 50 grams per day or even as low as 20 grams per day. Some people wouldn't even have to pay attention to the grams of carbs they're eating daily. They could beat diabetes and bring their A1C below 6.5 by simply determining to eliminate all sugar and all sugar-laden foods, sugar-added foods, and all starches. And without worrying about intermittent fasting or measuring ketones or counting how many carbs each food has, they could beat diabetes just by saying no to sugar, potatoes, grains, bread, and rice and pasta. That's it. 
just eliminating those foods, they could watch their A1C and their glucose levels drop, drop, drop over the next months. And in under a year, they would not be considered diabetic, oftentimes under six months. By practically any doctor they wanted to see, they could go to the doctor and say, hey, doc, am I diabetic? He gets and tests them and gets an A1C in the fives and says, no, not even close. And to be fair, there are some who get their A1Cs down into a non-diabetic range by eating a whole foods, plant-based diet, and they pay no attention to carbohydrates whatsoever. These are typically people who have not reached middle age, but it can sometimes be done. Depending on how many carbs they're eating, they may or may not have surging insulin levels, however, and that can be a problem even when glucose levels appear to be okay. And then there are those for whom almost nothing works. They cut their carbs and see some improvement, but not nearly enough. They try intermittent fasting and again, some improvement, but they're still significantly diabetic. They'll try a little of this and a little of that, but nothing seems to work. Temporary improvement, yeah, but thoroughly whipping diabetes, not at all. And their response to the lack of real results is to just give up on their most recent efforts, and often they end up worse than ever. And that brings us to these beat diabetes challenges. To explain what's going on with these challenges and why they work so spectacularly well when the guidelines are strictly adhered to, I want to share a phrase, the nuclear option. This phrase is used in a variety of ways. In our United States Senate, this term means to override normal procedure and make a decree based on a simple majority rather than the normal two-thirds majority required in most situations. Taking the nuclear option in a more everyday sense, means just use radical efforts to achieve success by any and all means possible. Sometimes we use the term go nuclear, which one dictionary defines this way, to resort to drastic measures in an attempt to undermine an opponent. I like that. And that is a pretty good way to see our fight with diabetes. We're going to go nuclear. Token efforts to defeat diabetes, moderate efforts, well, they're just not going to impress your enemy. Diabetes is downright nasty. It's mean. It fights dirty. Taking a gentle, moderate, light-handed approach to improve yourself is not going to work, at least not much. You're going to have to be tougher and nastier and more determined than your opponent. And as a sort of a health coach, I see it as my job to be a cheerleader for you and to encourage you to fight tough and to use every single weapon at your disposal. What I'm saying is that you need to go nuclear on diabetes. Most of the disciplines I encourage in these challenges could bring about some improvement if you just adopted them all by themselves. For many of you, you don't just need to improve However, you need to crush diabetes, to whip it thoroughly, and to pummel it mercilessly. And when I encourage diabetics to take these challenges, I tell them to set aside a four-month period, or sometimes six, a period of their lives where they will attack diabetes viciously with every weapon at their disposal. I want you to embrace every single discipline known on earth today to drive back high glucose levels through lifestyle not just by taking high-powered meds or injecting your bodies with far more insulin than they can handle. And for this reason, I challenge you to take up the weapon of serious low-carb eating plus the weapon of time-restricted eating, which means you eat only two meals a day with no snacking in between over the course of about six hours each day. And on top of this, I encourage people to make one day of the week a carnivore day where you eat no veggies, no carbs basically at all or next to none. To sum up the diet in this challenge, you just eat meat with no breaded coating, you eat low-carb vegetables and low-carb salads, and high-fat dairy like cheese and heavy cream. If you do eat dinner, make sure you finish it by 7 p.m. 6.30 would be better, and then you close up the food shop at that point. You're not going to taste a bit of food until the next day when your six-hour window comes around around 12.30 or 1. 
I also encourage our challenge participants to watch YouTube videos about the low-carb slash keto lifestyle and the means to reverse diabetes. By watching real doctors with real degrees, <laughs> you'll see it's not just this strange preacher from Texas who's advocating these things. There are men and women with real medical degrees who dare to challenge the conventional wisdom, which says that diabetics just need to switch from white rice to brown, from white bread to whole wheat, from white potatoes to sweet potatoes, and everything will be just fine. That advice does not work now, it has never worked in the past, and it never will work in the future. These disciplines that I recommend are not complicated. You do not have to have an advanced college degree to understand them and follow them. And the beauty of these challenges is that you don't have to take my word for it. Your glucose meter and your A1C tests are going to shout in your ears, you're on the right track. This stuff really, really, really works. So I encourage you, go nuclear on diabetes. Pick up every single weapon you have available. A low-carb diet, eating two meals a day within six hours, eliminating all snacks, having a carnivore day once a week, learning to enjoy keto desserts but no more than two per week, employing light exercise like walking or using the treadmill most days, and testing your glucose regularly to confirm your own progress. And of course, the testimonies just keep pouring in. Again and again, I hear from excited people, former diabetics or diabetics that are maybe still diabetic, but they're moving down fast. I recently received this fantastic report from a published author. This man said, I wanted to take a minute to thank you both for all you do with Beat Diabetes. I am an author of science fiction, fantasy, and horror novels my latest now being filmed as a movie. But nothing has been more scary than watching helplessly as diabetes slowly wreaked havoc on my body. I have suffered damage to my vision, neuropathy in my legs and feet, and my weight has been out of control for years. I started watching your channel a few years ago and half-heartedly took my A1C from 9.0 to 6.5. But I really became serious when you started this recent challenge at the beginning of September. I performed a home A1C test at that time, which was 6.5. And after a solid month of being very strict with changing my way of eating, I just did another test at the beginning of October, and my A1C is now 5.6. As a side effect, I've lost 25 pounds, and I am feeling wonderful. I cannot wait to see my results at the end of this challenge, but I've already decided this is my new lifestyle. I'm going to leave all the horror to my fiction stories. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. My desire for you is that by the end of this challenge, you will have tasted so much victory. You'll be like this guy who says, well, I've already decided this is how I'm going to be eating from now on. You will become addicted to beating diabetes and you will never be able to stop. Yes, you can tweak your diet a bit once the challenge is over. You may be able to expand your eating window from six hours to eight hours or maybe even 10. You may be able to eat an occasional bowl of bean soup with some low carb veggies thrown in, but you will never, ever, ever turn from your mission to crush diabetes and keep its ugly head under your feet for as long as you live. It's time, my friends, to go nuclear and stay nuclear in beating diabetes for the rest of your long, healthy, happy life. I want to encourage you to join Benedict and me in our home through our new podcast, Discover the Word with Den and Ben. While you drive in your car or while you walk or exercise at the gym, you can be learning the Bible through our low-key, user-friendly Bible studies. To get the information you need to listen to our Discover the Word with Den and Ben podcast, click on the link in the description.